too many, this is the good life. Sun, sand, and 80 degrees in midwinter. This is Melbourne, Florida. Christopher Soflita calls it home. It is a good life, but it's a substitute existence. My life was stolen, and I probably could have been much better in, in life than I am now. What happened here at 14 Holy Helpers in the late 1960s changed Soflita's life forever. Soflita says Father Joseph Friel pulled him from a religious studies class and took him to the rectory. In his own room, up the stairs in the rectory, uh, I guess he played some music. I don't remember if there was alcohol. I, I, don't, I don't recall that, but I remember smelling alcohol on him and try to kiss me and things like that and you know, set me on the bed and, and from there things progressed. And then it happened again and it progressed. So Felita says Friel sexually assaulted him perhaps a half dozen separate times. We were told to respect, you know, you know, not, not just, you know, adults, but, you know, priests and nuns, you know, they were special. We, you know, he just didn't say no. It took years and decades for Soflita to come to grips with the damage. Almost a quarter century later, Soflita took action. He sued the Buffalo Diocese over the abuse he says he suffered at the hands of Father Friel. Soflita would later withdraw the suit because the statute of limitations had expired. This all happened in 1994. It would be fair to say that in view of recent developments, Chief Legal Counsel for the Diocese then is the same person holding that job today. That would be Terry Connors. In 94, Connors told news organizations locally there have never been any similar allegations made against Father Friel. Two on your side can report that statement today is false. Including Soflita, two on your side has identified eight different people, all alleging they were victimized by Friel. Now you'll meet some of those folks in just a moment. But first, a little history about Father Joseph Friel. Friel died in 1995, a year after the Soflita lawsuit was filed. He was 63. Beginning in 1958, Father Friel served 34 years with the diocese. In that time, he had 14 separate postings spread throughout Western New York, most of them in Buffalo and the surrounding suburbs. For half of the assignments, Friel appears to have been there for just a year. During four years, records show he was on sick leave or unassigned. A spokeswoman for SNAP, the survivor network of those abused by priests, says the frequent moving of clergy is a red flag. It tells you he gets in trouble and they move him. Instead of taking care of the problem, they move the priest, and that's what they're, they have done for decades. And the first movement of Friel connected to an allegation of child sexual abuse happened here at the Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna. Friel was assigned here in 1965 and 66. The accuser has declined to be identified or interviewed in any way, but months ago, he contacted attorney Steve Boyd, not because he was looking for money from the diocese. Instead, he wanted to help. What he was saying to me was, you may have clients who need a witness, and if they need a witness, I will come forward and testify for them. Boyd tells us this now 66-year-old man was, in 1966, serving as an altar boy in a midweek mass. So it was after mass, and Father Friel attempted to take his pants down. The kid wailed and punched him in the mouth and gave him a fat lip. Friel responds by throwing some money on the floor and telling the boy to go buy himself an ice cream. Instead, the boy walks three blocks home, to this home. When the boy gets here, his father's working in the garage and he immediately asks, what happened? The kid assumes the priest has called and the dad knows everything, so he tells the whole incident. The dad goes in the house, gets his best clothes on, drives to the rectory and talks to the Monsignor and tells him what Father Friel tried to do to his son. Father Friel is moved a week later. Friel lands here, 14 Holy Helpers, from 1967 to 1970. It's one of the oldest churches in Western New York, and back then, it had a parish elementary school. My family was there for a long time, grandfather, father. 
This Buffalo area man would only tell his abuse story if we disguised him and did not share his name. He, like the previous two, was an altar boy, and he says he was also approached after assisting in a mass. Father Freer, I remember coming behind me, hugging me close, start tickling me, touching my private parts. Tried to get away, told him I didn't like it. Then after like maybe a second or third occasion, he actually put his hands down inside my, my uh, pants and touched my private parts. How soon did you tell your mother about this? I told her probably like the second time. Told her a couple times. She slapped me across the face each and every time that I told her and said, priest, priest don't do that. She sent me right back into the, to the devil's den. Back to the church, back to Friel. For Jill Jepson Kalachai, her abuse happened when she was 11 in her home. Her parents, both very active at 14 Holy Helpers, would regularly invite friends from church to parties in their basement. People would sit around and tell jokes and drink and smoke and, you know, this was 1960s and get dressed up and that was it. Friel would show up, drink, we're told heavily, and with the party still going, crept into Kalachai's bedroom. And then slowly he would come closer and closer. When he came in your room and touched you, mm -hmm. was there intimate touching? Oh yeah, he kissed my neck, he laid on top of me, he was rubbing himself, and he was getting off by get, being on me. And I would just freeze. I mean, I'd just lay there like this until he'd go away. Kelichai kept the abuse to herself until many years later. How many more do you know of at 14 Holy Helpers? From 14 Holy Helpers, we're aware of three additional survivors of abuse by Father Friel. Attorney Mike Reck represents these three unnamed accusers and spoke on their behalf for this story. All of them are male. Age when they allege the abuse? Abuse for all three of them ranges from age 11, 12 up to age 14. How many of them were altar boys? Uh, all three of them. Records indicate that Friel was out of 14 Holy Helpers by 1971. A couple of years later, he was promoted to pastor, which is essentially the lead priest in a parish. That was the title that Friel had when he arrived here at St. Patrick's in the Cattaraugus County town of Randolph. It is also where accuser number eight says that they were abused by Friel. This was in 1978 and 79. The Buffalo Diocese found the accusation credible enough to make a settlement offer. No details on dollar amount available. Eight alleged victims, three different parishes, one priest, moved repeatedly throughout his 34-year career, leaving in his wake children, who today as adults wonder why the diocese did not protect them. The people before me, the people after me, this can all have been prevented. I wouldn't have to be sitting here telling you this story today if they would have addressed it back in the day. That I know.